For the sake of this video, I'm not going to be talking about new motorcycles that are made to look like old motorcycles, and honestly all the reasons why old motorcycles still look better even than those new motorcycles that are made to look like old motorcycles. Now this video is about why it is that motorcycles in general have in many ways gotten uglier, and what it is about old motorcycles that cause people to just turn their heads. The first and arguably biggest reason has to do with functionality. See there's this discussion that goes on about form and function, in which you put first First, industries advance over time as they put function first. And interestingly enough, beauty can come out of function. Today you may look at, say, a cafe racer and see something really beautiful. You know, the low handlebars, you know, maybe a small fairing, the stripped down look of a motorcycle with, for example, virtually no fenders or really small taillights and indicators. But all of that came out of function, you know, the desire to go faster, to be more aerodynamic, and to have a machine with less weight. The general form of a gas-powered motorcycle with the tank above the engine and then the exhaust sweeping to the rear, it's beautiful to us, but it's all been structured that way over time for a reason. You'll often see riders who like older motorcycles, often older riders, and they'll complain about all of the plastic used in modern motorcycles, and of course, I can understand that complaint. And I would generally agree, but it's important to understand why motorcycle companies use plastic. Motorcycles are similar to cars in this way, and countless millions of dollars and time have gone into developing these plastics for weight saving and rigidity and overall safety, and that's especially true with cars. Some of that isn't as true with motorcycles. These plastics used, again mainly in cars, are actually significantly safer than the metals of old. This is why modern cars are so much safer than old cars, but in the motorcycle industry, it's a bit different. The truth is that the plastic on motorcycles is really just plastic. <laughs> And its primary benefit over metals is weight savings, aerodynamics, and cost. And I should also note that the reason I'm saying this, a lot of this has come from a discussion that I've had a few times with my brother-in-law who is very into the automotive world and into cars and knows a lot about the history of cars and just the engineering behind them. But again, like I said, some of these things don't really seem to apply to motorcycles because the plastics aren't really there to protect the operator the way that they are with a car. But mainly weight savings and cost. Those are really the things. Most naked motorcycles are still covered in plastic. It's cheaper, and it's easier, and it's simpler to manufacture. But often what we're left with is a slew of motorcycles that look and feel entirely uninteresting, and even just corporate. You know, the reason you might find a handcrafted blanket on Etsy more appealing than, say, a blanket from Ikea or Target isn't that the Etsy blanket is inherently better at keeping you warm or staying together in the washing machine. It's not even that it's more colorful or even more beautiful. It's that you can tell and you can feel that it was created by a real person with a passion for making blankets, not like some massive company with a passion for, let's be real, making money. <laughs> Older motorcycles often look better because of the craftsmanship, the simple beauty of, for example, an exhaust, you know, designed by hand on a piece of paper, you know, sketched out and the metal that's heated and formed by a real person that's sweating and straining and then fitted to the bike exactly the way that it was originally drawn. This is, for me, the real thing that makes not only old motorcycles stand out, but also some new motorcycles. It's why an MV Agusta catches your eye more than most Hondas. It's because that MV was designed more than likely with, you know, real clay mold, even though of course there's computers involved and all sorts of technology going into these motorcycles, there seems to be a higher level of craftsmanship even if it is a bit more modern, and that's what we find beautiful. Hence the tagline for MV Agusta, motorcycle art. And hence the reason it's one of the only modern motorcycle brands that has really caught my eye. But motorcycles are a unique form of art. They're not like a painting that you look at or a sculpture that you look at or a beautiful film that you look at. No, motorcycles are different. They're a form of art that you experience to a different level than any other form of art. You can use them. Heck, you can even break them. But all of this comes from function. Function is everything, and it informs what we find beautiful. My old Triumph has an entirely exposed engine. You know, we love that because it's cool to see an entire engine just sitting out there. Old motorcycles are exotic in this way, but really it's the function that is making them this way. That's what really matters. The engine is there so that you can easily adjust the valves, for example, or 
check the compression or even take the entire thing out with really simple tools. The function has led to the form and the form is beautiful. There's two ways to look at motorcycle beauty. You can look back at the old function of a combustion engine attached to two wheels done so simply and elegantly, you can't help but look twice. And I've done that, I can relate to that, I completely understand that, and I've, I've experienced it by buying a 50-year-old classic Triumph and I wouldn't sell it for anything, even after riding new motorcycles, and even when comparing it to the motorcycles that are trying to look like it. Or you can look forward to a new function, a battery attached to two wheels, and you can wonder what will that form be going forward, and this is something that most motorcycle companies have yet to do. Whatever it will be, it can't be the same form. Things have changed, and we as motorcycle enthusiasts have to change with with it. There's one motorcycle designer who has never been afraid to push the form, and his name is Pierre Terblanche, and he happens to have just designed another polarizing motorcycle. This time, though, it's electric. So this is Pierre, and this is his electric motorcycle that he has designed. Well, it's not his, but it's, you know, from the company BST, who he's partnered with, and it is the BST Hypertech, a motorcycle that could polarize enthusiasts almost as much as his Ducati 999. The story behind that motorcycle will be another video. What do you feel when you first look at this motorcycle? Do you feel like this is a pretentious attempt at making something futuristic maybe? Well at first it might seem that way, but the more you look and the more you understand this motorcycle, it's not that kind of bike. And listen, Pierre is not that kind of designer. As much as this motorcycle might make you think otherwise. See, much like the first motorcycles to, for example, do away with pedals, the BST Hypertech is an entirely new form designed from an entirely new function, namely an electric one. And there's things you need and there's things you don't need. For example, there's no gas tank because guess what? There's no gas. And there's no fake gas tank because who cares about the haters? Am I right, Pierre? Pierre doesn't care. What there is is a place to lay your stomach when you want to go fast and a few holders for your legs, and it kind of looks like a gas tank, but you can tell it's really not a gas tank. The tailpiece is minimal and brutal, it's just there to keep you from falling off the back, in Pierre's words. The battery sticks out of the bike and has fins for both the outside and then also throughout the battery for cooling. As he explains, much like a BMW boxer engine that, you know, stuck out of the sides of the bike for the exact same reasons. The bike has a clutch because a clutch is actually useful. If you found yourself slipping on an electric motorcycle in some, like, dodgy terrain, you wish you had a clutch, and you'll understand this, and that's why he put a clutch on it. The powertrain and even the battery can be easily removed. The battery is actually two batteries, so if you just want to go for a quick romp and you want the thing to weigh, like, 30 kilograms less, I think he says, you can remove half of the battery. So the function is similar to my old Triumph in that way. It's open and it's exposed so that you can get to it and you can actually like mess with it. Almost everything can be bolted off and changed so that your one motorcycle could really be any style you want. As he describes it, you could have multiple pieces hanging in your garage to be multiple motorcycles and you just clip on the different handlebars and the different pieces and you have a different motorcycle. But to me, the simplicity of this bike for the purpose of function, is beautiful the same way that old motorcycles are beautiful, especially really old motorcycles, like the almost agricultural motorcycles of, say, the 20s. Motorcycles built at a time when engineers and designers were really just trying to figure out this whole, like, powered two-wheel thing. So, is the BST Hypertech beautiful? To me, I think it can be. But more than anything, I think it's a starting point for motorcycle engineers and designers to start thinking outside the box about what a motorcycle can look like. Well, this video has gone all over the place, but I think the biggest thing for me when looking at old motorcycles, and especially the most beautiful old motorcycles that have ever existed, is the form. Being able to see through the bike, you know, gives you a sense of lightness. The fact that there's just only what needs to be on the bike is beautiful. Simplicity is everything, and simplicity is everything for designers. Beautiful motorcycle designs are often the ones that do the bare minimum, but do those things well. And the key to a beautiful motorcycle is how little you can do. Ultimately, the motorcycle is yours, though. You become the artist when you take ownership of a motorcycle and you ride it. So, in the end, don't worry about whether you own a motorcycle that's considered art or, you know, just considered simple transportation. You can make that bike your own. And that is what's really beautiful.